Hey, so in active time today, we did not get to finish and cover the RC circuit, so I just wanted to make a little video basically talking about what we would talk about. So this is the final PCQ question. Uh, so you've had time to think about it. Uh, the capacitor here, so we have this circuit. This is from uh, practice quiz four. It's an RC circuit. The capacitor is initially uncharged and the switch is moved to position A at time t equals to zero. What is the current I through through resistor R1 immediately after the switch is moved to position A? So I'll give you a second if you want to pause and think about it. All right, so, so what would happen here is um, uh, the answer is one amp. And the way I think about this, and so I think, first of all, this kind of switch is kind of confusing. Uh, but basically, this switch allows you either to sort of connect at point A and have the circuit that way or connect through point B. And so it's essentially, uh, in, connect, uh, in point A, it sort of involves the battery. In point B, it's just the, um, the capacitor and the resistor by itself. And so it just gives you kind of a convenient way to, to do what we want. And so at point A, if I was to draw out the circuit, so we'd have our battery. And then we'd have this, which is my R1. We'd have this, which is my R2. Uh, and then this comes back to the battery over here. So the battery is the voltage V. And then, so we'd have this over here, this capacitor. And so that's how the circuit would look if you do through uh, position A. Now, if you go to position B, basically it's just that capacitor. And then in series with some resistor, we'll call it R3. And so that's basically the two circuits we have. Now here, we're asked about when I first close the switch, uh, what would the current be through uh, R1? And so in this particular case here. So uh, with a capacitor, the way that it works is, is when, you when you first close the switch, there's no charge on the capacitor. Uh, and what happens is it charges up over time and then fills up. And so what happens is, is we can think about sort of two cases. So there's the T is equal to initial, and then the T is equal to, we'll call infinity, so some long time. Uh, T equal to zero, the capacitor just acts like a wire. Okay, so you can just literally erase the capacitor and draw a wire there. At time equals to infinity, uh, the capacitor fills up, and it basically works like a, a break in the circuit. And so you can sort of draw a break in the circuit. And so in our particular case here, Okay, in this situation, if I do this, well, at time zero, I'm going to have this battery. And so we just do what we just sort of talked about. Oh, sorry, it's a bad, bad picture. Um, so we have this one resistor, and then this one resistor. And then here we just have a short a wire. Uh, and so it's R1. This is R2. And this would be your V. And so this is a short circuit. So essentially, uh, this wire acts like a short, short circuit. And so uh, all the current will go around this way uh, at time zero and bypass this guy. So we should be real careful that this is our time equals to zero situation. So it bypasses this. So we can just essentially forget about this part in the middle here. And we have a, a, the simplest circuit in the world, our, our, our battery V and our uh, resistor R1. So the current then would just be using our V equals uh, IR equation. Uh, it would be this 10 volts divided by 10 ohms, and that would be 1 amp. Now, just out of curiosity, I, I could have asked, you know, about time zero or time infinity. So time infinity, this would look something like this here. Now, we didn't ask this, but why not do it since we have a little bit more time here? Uh, and so that would end up with a break in the circuit. And so this would be R1, this would be R2. And so now uh, the current doesn't go through the capacitor at all. It just goes through these two guys. And so now my current would be V, and it would be divided by the sum, because R1 and R2, in this case, are in series. And so what is they both 10. So it would be 10 uh, divided by 20, or 1 half amps would be the current. Uh, in that case. And so if I asked that question, the answer would have been B for that one. All right, so now uh, <clears throat> we ask uh, in this problem, this is again from practice quiz, determine the energy U stored in the capacitor after the switch has been at a position A for a very long time. And so again, uh, that's sort of the case we were just sort of talking about. Uh, and a good thing that we sort of described it because we can use that to help us here. 
And so uh, what's happening is, again, uh, there's no current going through the capacitor, right? And what do we need to do this? So to find out uh, this information for the capacitor, uh, we need, uh, there's a couple different ways to do this equation, of course, but one way is to do one half C uh, V squared. We know the C, right? That's given to us in the problem. So we just need to find the voltage across the capacitor. And in this case, it's not going to be the voltage of the battery because this uh, resistor R1 here is acting. And so let's just look through this circuit. So again, the capacitor is fully charged. It's got some Q and everything. Um, and so we have this current that we just talked about, the current of 0 0.5 amps that's going through these guys. And so here, this is 10 volts. And so if we look at our picture here, and maybe I'll make a different color just to be a little fancy. Um, so our change in voltage over both of these is going to be I times R. So it's 0 0.5 amps times uh, R of, of 10. And so it's going to be 5 volts. So that'd be the, 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 the change in voltage, the voltage drop across R1. And the same thing, the voltage drop across R2 is 5 volts too. Now this will make sense to us because basically if we look at a Kirchhoff's loop, if I start here, I get up 10 volts through the battery, I go down 5, I go down 5, and I'm back where I started. But more importantly, what that tells us is the voltage drop across the capacitor is 5 volts too. And there's, there's another video where I kind of go more into depth into this idea. But basically the idea is, is you've got you know a bunch of charges here and a bunch of charges here. And charges are only going to move if there's sort of an advantage to them. And basically, uh, you know, when you, the capacitor is full, this is like a little piece of metal, okay? And, and so whatever, let's just assume that, that this is like, you know, call this zero volt at the bottom and five volts at the top. Uh, basically, uh, every sort of piece of these wires here has the same potential. So there's no advantage for the charge to move over here. Uh, and the same thing over here. All these points are at zero volts, and so there's no advantage for the charge to move. Uh, and so it just keeps that voltage 5 volts. But, but you, you, know, you know that because you can also, another way to think about it is to do a Kirchhoff's loop right around here. Right? This will always be true. And so, so here there's like a you know, voltage of, of 5 volts, and so there should be a voltage of 5 volts across over there too. So either way you cut it, uh, that's what you get. And so then you do 1 half the capacitance, 10 microfarads, and then 5 volts squared. And so this will come out to be, when I calculated it, uh, 1.25 times 10 to the negative fourth joules. All right, so you need to know that information about this being uh, at some long, so for a very long time later. So that was a, a key part of that one. Um, and then finally in this one, it says, after being at position A for a long time, the switch is now moved to position B. After the switch is moved to B, how much time does it take to reduce the charge on the capacitor to half of its original value. And so, uh, so as, as we were talking before, then now the circuit is this here. So we've got that capacitor and then R3. And again, our capacitor is fully charged. All right. Now, in, in previous videos, we, we've talked about this system where you have one capacitor, one resistor, and the capacitor is now discharging. And so this would be an example of discharging. So we go through and, and we do some differential equations. You did this in homework too. Um, but, but the good news is that if you find a circuit like this, you don't have to do the work we did. You can just sort of jump out and say, well, I know the equation uh, for the charge across this capacitor is equal to this here. So QT is equal to you know, your Q0, which is like your, your Q total. And then over this case like this right here, negative T over RC. So this is the equation you can use. So whenever you find an equation or whenever you can break some circuit down to a case like this and you're discharging, okay, you can jump right to this equation. Now, there, there are cases where you won't be able to break it down to this and you'll have to find something else. But the idea is that if you can, you can use this equation right away. And so this equation here, uh, so now you have everything you need. We want to find out when the capacitor is half its original value. And so what we do is we do some trick like this. So, so QT over the Q total, that's like your starting point. That equals E to the negative TRC. And what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to say, well, I want this to equal one half. Right? I want the ratio of my Q at the certain time over the Q total to be one half. And so then it's just this equation, uh, one half equals to E to the negative. Now we haven't dealt in this class too much with exponentials, but hopefully you have in your life. Um, and so what you do in this case is you'd find the natural log of both sides. And the natural log of, of an exponential right, is nice. It just turns out to be the fact of the uh, exponent and the exponential. And so now you go through and solve for this. And so the time in this particular case, uh, when I figure this out, is negative RC natural log of 1 half. And so again, uh, the resistor was 10 ohms. Uh, the capacitor was 10 microfarads. And then natural log of 1 half, which turns out to be a negative number, which cancels with that negative to give us a positive. When I did this, I got uh, 6.9 to the 10 to the negative fifth seconds. Um, and so again, so whenever you can break this down to this piece here, you can just use this equation. Say, I know from our discussions in the past that this is the right equation. Now, I just wanted to point you in some other directions too. So there's two videos I made. You can find these on Piazza or if you just go through my, my YouTube channel. I've never actually said that out loud before. Um, but, but one video was called 28.80 help. And so it helps you with this one problem, and it kind of talks a little bit. Uh, but the one that might be even more useful is RC recap. And so it sort of recaps some of the stuff about RC circuits uh, and also points you back to other sources. So, so try those videos, and also you know, uh, feel free to post on Piazza if you have more questions. Thanks, everybody.